Some of our dudes on here. Okay, I'm going to jump into it just because I have so much. I always think I'm going to run out of content or run out of something. And it just, it just never, it never ended. Cool thing is that through awareness, things start to seem a little easier, you know, and through, you know, um, repetition and not giving up on yourself and not throwing in the towel and not hanging yourself and not killing other people. We are here to to continue on to another day. So one thing that I have been working on uh, for these three webinars that I'm putting on free for um, to kind of like revamp our Facebook community that uh, kind of went dormant uh, during COVID where we were on our, our world tour, our quantum revolution tour, where we did that three day biohacking. I know a lot of you guys were there, but we kind of like went dormant and, you know, COVID was an important cocooning process for all of us in our own way. You know, being stuck with people we didn't want to be stuck with, uh, completely changing our lives, um, taking back our authentic self, deciding what was really important. So regardless of what the matrix throws at us, every negative is a shortcut. If you pay attention, everything is designed in your favor. So one of the, one of the things that I want to start with is that I've been working on, I'm not, I, I suck. I suck at reels and TikToks and one minute teachings. Like literally this anxiety comes inside of me and I'm like, I need more than a minute. Cause you know, I get onto the rampage and you know, this is why we have to watch the videos over and over again because I say too much in such a small time. So I've been working on kind of like these little niche things that I can teach in one to two minutes uh, for myself mostly so that I can put myself out there on the map again in this new butterfly reality that I'm I'm working towards. And the, the idea is, is, and I've shared some of this in you guys' private session, but really the way that you need to look at the matrix and this whole virtual reality is that it's a game of chess. And I've always said that, and this is why this year, this class is called non-duality. Because if you can look at everything without judgment, without black, white, wrong, right, if you can just look at the cards that you have or the position that you're playing, then you can understand that you have every single thing within you that you're ever going to need. There is nowhere that you need to get to or go to or become. It's more about the unlearning and it's more about getting out of your own mind, right? It's like, it's like what does Joe Dispenza say? You know, it's like you have to lose your mind to come to your senses. And really, we have to, lo we have to lose the world's mind that we keep thinking with. Because as long as you're thinking with the world's mind, right, you're a, you're a critical thinker. You're judging yourself. You're worried about what other people think. You're not taking chances. You're staying comfortable and small because of something that happened when you're five years old. And when you are in the God conscious mind or the Christed mind, you are a creator. Why would you react? You'd be like, I don't like that picture. You know, you've seen two children play in, in kindergarten and one child is drawing and they mess up and they go, and they throw it on the ground and they get a new paper. And then there's that one kid that's like, has to roll it all up and throw a tantrum and I suck and I'm not good at this. It's like, who are you going to be as a creator? Right? How are you showing up as a creator? You're like, mm, let's start again. Because every moment, every moment, every moment is the opportunity to start again. Okay, don't like it? You, you drew outside the lines? You don't want that look? You don't want abstract? Okay, start again. But instead, we, we'll throw tantrums in the form of critical thinking or self-punishment or blaming others. See, our, our tantrums get quieter and quieter and quieter as we get older. But see, the tantrum just goes in internally. We're having an internal internal tantrum. One thing I love about my giant six foot four, I hope he's not watching right now, but six foot four boyfriend that is military, like Navy SEALs, professional athlete, is that he will fall, he will throw full blown tantrums. Like, <laughs> and I just like, I love it. I love it so much because I'm just like, what's happening right here? You're, you're five, but you're allowing me to see your five. It's not like, well, logically and clinically and technology, and he's not doing that tantrum. And so I'm very aware. Okay, what do you need? Because I know how, I know how to deal with a childlike tantrum. I do not know how to deal with a 50 year old tantrum that's just imploding on the inside with control issues, micromanaging every word I say, which I've experienced in the past. So it's a good thing because we all have that tantrum and that storm within us 
that needs to be expelled if we're going to lighten the hell up. And that's all this is about. The kingdom of heaven is light. It's not dense. It's not heavy. It's not waiting. It's it's buoyant. It's floaty. It's free. It's nonsense. It's rainbows and butterflies and whatever you can imagine is real is real. And then the logical game of the matrix, which is judge every word out of your mouth and others, right? Uh, relive your past to two o'clock in the morning when your cortisol should be lower and it's higher. And you're gaining weight in your sleep, thinking about what you did in the fourth grade. I mean, that is literally like adulthood in the matrix. But if you look at the game and go back to the analogy of what it is as a chess game. Okay, so imagine this, you are, you are God and you have the upper hand. But you don't know you have the upper hand because you have amnesia. You don't know that you are born in the image of the creator, which means that you are creator. And as soon as you remember that, you're going to start taking your authority back and the game is going to get a little bit higher. So imagine if you were playing chess against someone who was not as good as you, someone who didn't have infinite knowledge and practice and, you know, divine help. Imagine you were playing against someone, but they wanted to win more than you did maybe okay how could they beat you how could they beat you at this game if you're better if you have more genius in, inside of you you have more practice you have more awareness of the board you even understand who you're playing against more than they understand themselves how could they possibly win i will tell you right now how they win they look across the board. They see that the odds are not in their favor. They know they're going to get their ass whooped. And so they stare at you and go, why'd you pick that shirt today? That shirt's ugly. And you're like, what? I'm looking at the game. And they're like, your mom didn't like breastfeed you, did you? And like the whole time you're playing the game, which you're better at, okay, that you've played a million times in your sleep that you could do without, you know, without any help, all of a sudden they're in your head. And as soon as the matrix is in your head, you forget how good you are. You forget what a creator you are. You forget how to do this. You forget that thoughts are the bricks that create your new world. You forget that feelings create the moods that create the vibrational alignment in 4D that creates the new reality. You forget all of this because you move right into defending your persona defending your identity, protecting your inner child. And now you are literally moving from creator to reactor, okay? And once you are reacting, you are basically going to lose this game. And I know you've all been there. And the thing is, I, I, I've had so many people over the years ask me the same question over and over again. And the question is, is how come I can get really high and then I go really low? How come I can have two days where I feel like greater, I start moving energy, things start to shift, and then the bottom falls out? How come? Because you guys have to understand that the patterns in the matrix are designed exactly like day and night. There is a daytime of your pattern, and there's a nighttime of your pattern. There is a high of your pattern, or you wouldn't keep doing it. And there's a low in your pattern, which makes you feel like your shirt is ugly. Okay? And the, the because it's a circle. Every pattern that you're repeating in time, in relationships, with health, with money, with other people, with your family, with your home, with your job, with your purpose, is nothing more than a circular experience of day and night. So there's going to be highs that are going to bring the lows. Just like I know it's daytime today and I know it's going to be night. I don't judge it. I don't be like, whoa, I hope it doesn't get dark later because I'm feeling really good in the sun. I don't feel that way either do you. But when it comes to your pattern looping into the dark, this is why we studied in quantum fitness, the dark side of our moon is because you need to know who you're going to become when the moon is full. You need to know who you're going to become at night. You need to know who you're going to become when you can't see in front of you, when someone's making fun of your shirt, okay? Someone's making fun of your mom and telling you, you know, where you come from. And now you have to defend your childhood, which you hated. So you have to be aware that each pattern is going to have a day and night sequence. And when you're in the day, it all feels like you're never going to forget. You're like, oh, I'm never going to forget how I feel right now. I, I'm full creator. Like, I know how to do this. I've mastered this. And then the night comes and you can't remember anything you were doing to create. Because in the night, in the dark, you can't see. You don't know. 
Hold on one second. I got to let these puppies out. Dog, right? Oh, person outside. I've seen a billion times. I need to go bark again. It, it, seriously, it's like a loop. Broken record, right? Okay, so hopefully this is clicking this morning because we're getting to this place where we're moving into this ninth month, right? Like we have had almost nine months basically of this 23 year, which is designed to wake us up with chaos, with change, with choice. You've had choices that you've never had before. You have chaos you haven't experienced in a while, okay? You have, you know, different aspects of yourself coming back from the past that you thought you cleared right now, and that's okay. Because the higher level of awareness you become, the better parent you become. So again, as you become a better parent, you're gonna have that old tantrum show up so you can reparent yourself and integrate that in. You're gonna meet your old trauma when you level up. So, one of the things that Neville Goddard teaches a lot about, and we've taught this through every class we've ever done, is the self-concept. He calls it the self-concept, self okay? And so if we take the idea of self-concept and we look at this idea of this chess game, that what your opponent is doing is lowering your self-concept to get you to break. Same thing your parents did to you so you would follow the rules. Un unwillingly or un like they were doing it from love. Like, oh, I need to break you down so you won't run away from home or you won't get too big for your riches and get your feelings hurt. Whatever they did was basically they saw something, a lot of potential in you. And so they told you your shirt was ugly so that you would play smaller. Okay, that's what your childhood was. Even if you had a fabulous, you know, childhood, your parents were like, you can do anything you set your mind to, you're the Messiah, you're God's gift. Maybe you went to school and they were like, no, you're not, your nose is ugly. So it doesn't matter when it happened for you, but obviously if you're in this class, you're trying to figure out who the hell you are and how to get back into that career state every day, all, all day, all the time, just like I am. So with that being said, is this, uh, when something is so foreign to your truth within you, it sticks like like you're going along and you're feeling amazing and you're feeling light and you're feeling bubbly. And then someone's like, your voice is horrific. Right. And that is such an untruth to who you are inside that it will stop you in your tracks. And it is so like, wait, what? Like, it's such a shock to your system because it doesn't resonate that it's almost like smashing glass. And in that moment, you are frozen trying to figure out why someone would say something to you like that in this moment of your bliss when you were experiencing yourself so authentically. And so because you can't figure it out, you stay frozen in that space. And because you didn't like the way that felt, which was your measurement and indicator that it was untrue, anytime you feel bad, it's untrue. Instead, you said, I, I need to cover this up so no one ever says this again, because I did not like the way that felt. I liked feeling free and, you know, buoyant and light, but I did not like being attacked for it or judged for it. So I do not want to have this experience again. So maybe I'm going to tone it down around people. So this is why you feel so much more comfortable by yourself because you can be, you know, you can be whoever you want and no one's going to be like, your shirt's ugly. No one's going to say that to you. But see, what happens is you don't realize is that you can leave the physical world or, you know, you can leave the social scene but you take the inner voice with you because you don't want to experience that again. So you don't want to let your guard down. But see, then again, we have law of attraction and law of resistance that says what you resist persists. So now you've turned your volume way down and you go out and you whisper. And someone's like, why are you whispering? So now you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You're getting, you're, you're getting in trouble for not speaking now. You're getting in trouble for not speaking your truth. You're getting in trouble for not excelling. You're, you're getting in trouble for being so damn shy now. Why are you so reverse? Why, 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 why? And so now it's like, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And so then what you do is you try, you know, you may go through a rebellious stage. You know, you may go goth or hippie or whatever. You might join a cult. You might get real religious. Because what you're doing is you're like, where is it okay for me to be me? You know? And then if you're like me and you're really dumb, you just go get married so you can get abused every day, all day long and then have kids that just trap you into it and so you can see your shadow and all your kids. 
that's fine, right? Because now it's like, you can't get away from it like all day because your parent, your your husband or your wife will just be, that, that first one especially will just be your parents, you know, or your church or your teacher or whoever you tried to run away from, you'll run right into it because it's day and night, you see? So you're, we're never getting away from anything. We're just going through a day and night sequence. And so sometimes when you think, oh, I have a brand new life, you're just in the daytime of it. And when it hits night, this is where your self-concept is important. Because being able to hold your state of being of I am or whatever you're choosing in the moment, you know, I am free to be myself. Well, that also means in the nighttime, when the bottom falls out, when the money disappears, when you are attacked, when you are judged, when you don't have what you need. And being able to stay in that state of being is very difficult for willpower because the willpower is basically you trying to override 75 trillion cells that all want to go into that. Why me? Why is this happening? This isn't fair. You know what I mean? So it's like they, they're they all in the sequence because they forgot they were in that same pattern a million times. So this is why like this year we from a non-dualistic space of no judgment have been working to study our own patterns recognizing you know who we are in certain situations taking responsibility you know um taking our power back in different ways alchemizing the aspects of ourselves of fractals consciousness of our traumas we've been doing all this work for for this year and we're getting to this moment where it's like where we should be focused the most right now is you know enough to get yourself killed right you do you know way too much but you've embodied too little or you've let go of too little. And so you're, you might be stuck somewhere. And if you're, if you learn, if you know too much about yourself, right. then what you're doing is, is you're be, you're giving awareness to your higher self. That's always been waiting at the finish line for you. Your higher self is at the finish line waiting for you completely complete with all the things you've ever asked for beckoning you towards her or him through desire, which means when you feel desire, it's coming from your higher self, like I'm over here. And what you're feeling is the wafting of the chocolate chip cookies. You're smelling it, you're feeling it, you're coming towards it. Okay. And as you start to come towards it, right? The old pattern that says, you're never going to finish anything. You don't finish what you start, you fail. That program pops up. And as you're walking towards the finish line, you meet the dark side of the moon or the night of your pattern and our job is to be able to hold our self-concept and look at the negative sequence as just a nighttime part of our pattern instead of thinking what am i doing this wrong i was doing so good the bottom fell out everybody starts attacking me the money starts disappearing right when i'm building my new company you know the new business partner disappears because the thing is is at night you can't see anything you can't see what's growing underneath the ground. You can't see what's becoming for you, right? And it's and and so it's like, literally, what do we do at night? We go to sleep. So what you do is you go to sleep. It's your own awareness. And then you have to start the whole program again. But what happens is the more losses and the more people call us stupid and the more people take from us and the more we allow, you know, the tantrums to stay inside of our bodies instead of outside, then that wafting of those chocolate chip cookies of that heaven that's waiting for you it starts to feel like a pipe dream you start to not even like you you start to get allergic to cookies you start to get allergic to your own greatness because every time you go for it you get hurt now if you've been on this metaphysical journey you have done shadow work you have done inner child work you have probably done time travel at this point you've done different kinds of regressions You've been in your Akashic Records. I mean, you've been all through the different dimensions at this point for the purpose of integrating yourself into higher self, which means bringing this physical mattered body into alignment with that which you already are. That's the whole point of the game, okay? But one of the things that I think is really gonna help you today that's been helping me is to recognize when the dark shows up that it's just night. It's go back to your non-duality training. This is not bad or good. It's just like, you don't walk outside and go, oh, 
right? But see, if you're five years old and you have night fears, the night is scary. The night is where no one comes when you're crying. The night is where it, you can't see, you don't know, you're hearing weird noises, right? You're all those things are playing in your head. Some of you still have night fears, okay? You, you know, I've got to listen to my two fans blowing, like jet engines on me, you know, it's like the night is, it, it's quiet and it's too quiet. Some of you need that super quiet and if noise is gonna rattle your cages. Eat to each their own here. It doesn't really matter what story you're in. It just matters how the night or the dark side of your pattern shows up to you. Because what I've noticed is that, that the ego death that I've been experiencing this uh, last year is nothing more than a sum of exhausted nights. Because again, as soon as the daytime comes, you forget how scared you were and you dust yourself back off and you go outside again and you're like, this is amazing and great. And you put yourself out there and you're teaching and you're you're writing your, your curriculum and you're writing your book. And then the night comes and you don't publish it. Or the night comes and you're like, who's going to read this? There's already a thousand teachers that do this. Or where's the clients? Or my money just got stolen. You know, or something's going to happen. And so what can we do at, in the night side of our pattern to stay in the state of being? To say, okay, this, this guy is telling me my shirt's ugly because he knows that I'm going to kick his butt at this game. And this is where I have been going back and forth between my meditations and working with my higher self and then studying like analytics of really high level professional athletes and professional like one percenters, not the elites because they're doing all the weird cult voodoo shit on you. But I'm talking about like, like the Michael Jordans, right? And uh, Kobe Bryant. So it's like, what is their mythology? Like, what do they do before a game? What, how do they, how do they lead a team and like blow everybody else out of the water, you know, every game? Like, what is their mindset in order to be so great that Nike's like, let me make a shoe for you. You know what I mean? Like, how do you get, and all it is, is a mindset. Because the difference between us and them is they prepare for the nights. We don't. They work in the dark night as if it's the day. Because the day is just where you show up and act it out. The night is where the preparation is. The night is where the practice is. It's the practice, prepare, play. Like, you're waiting for the sun to come up. These are the three P's, practice, prepare, play. But the thing is, is their self-concept is, Mahalan Ali, I'm the greatest, right? I'm the best there is. No one will defeat me. Which means that's their self-concept, whether it's day or night, whether they're sick or healthy, whether they have a bum knee or not. They don't go, oh, I have a bum knee, I'm going to play shit. They go, I'm the greatest. My knee is going to be perfect during the game. I'll ice it after can you imagine if you had that mindset for your manifestation goals, for the new home you want, for the partner you want to manifest, for the money that you want? Like, imagine that. So the team and I who are writing the Big Metamorphosis Academy program, we are studying those trainers of those professional athletes and the, ap the, the athletes' mindsets. Because we want to see where the synergy and coherence is between whether you're Olympic or, you know, high level over here or what and it's all the same they always imagine winning the game before the game starts okay they all play the game before the game in their mind so their muscle memory is already prepared okay this is living in the wish fulfilled and then they are telling themselves through the whole game i'm the winner i'm the winner i'm the winner so their body shows up before the game as the winner and you know it's just like this one guy says oh you know they used to the other teammates would call me because, you know, I'm the best on the team. And they, and he said, Oh, my knee hurts. What do I do? And he's like, shut the fuck up. Like be the best you can be and stop thinking about your knee because the knee is just, what does the knee represent? Pride. Right. And what does pride represent? Ego. Okay. So your ego's flared up and you know what I mean? So it's, a, it's not like, Oh, ignore the physical body, but see mind over matter. It is so much of mind over matter at the end of this. Because your self-concept of yourself has to stay consistent. You can't be like, I'm the best in the world, but oh shoot, this new kid that's coming up, he's younger than me, stronger than me, healthier than me, right? It's like, no, no. And, and oh, you you understand what ridicule these guys go through 
Like you see them, oh, they're the greatest player in the world. You don't see all of the heckling and the accusations and, and all the night that comes at them. All I mean, you don't see that because what you're going to see through your reels and television is highlight reels or dist disrupted reels. Like you're going to see the highs and the lows. You're never going to see the mundane because mundane doesn't sell. Okay. Sex sells, you know, problems sell, greatness sells, solution sells. Okay. And what you're looking on social media is you don't want to see someone Monday. You don't want to see someone sit on, on the couch with their hand down their pants. You want to see someone having a conflict or making a, a, a cake or doing something cool. Right. You're not looking for social media for four hours, watching the mundane, watching fish tank. You want to watch something that's going to grab your attention. Okay. So your highlight reels are where you can focus. Now, when you're looking at self-concept, the thing about it is we're, we're putting together this big self-concept part of the Metamorphosis Academy that's going to be its own course because it's the most important thing. You manifest through your self-identity, how you see yourself, Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna run through some questions just so you can like go oh shiz, I let this person get to, in my head, okay? Because your self identity is not just who you see in the mirror in the morning and like okay I've got this, boss bitch. No, it's not. It is not. It is, and I'll run through just some basic generic questions that through this like awareness can get you to go oh. I have believed that my shirt is ugly. And if you have believed that your shirt is ugly, you will not be playing up to Michael Jordan's level, even though you're God. You will not be, you will not win the game before you start. It's like, if I found out I was playing against someone who'd never played before, I'm like, I got this. I've already won. But see, they sit down and they're better at mental warfare than I am. Oh, shoot. Now I'm questioning myself. Because as soon as you question yourself, the, the, Neville Goddard talks about there's only one devil and its name is doubt. And as soon as you doubt anything about you, you've lost. You cannot doubt, right? And even when these guys that are at 1%, they do lose a game. They look at it as a win because they can study themselves. They can study themselves. They can study other people. They can study what where they were not in the right alignment. So they look at it as just as important as the wins. Because then they could study, they could study where they were, why they were, how they were. So if we could look at our losses or our failures as opportunities to study where our self-concept is buying into this bullshit that we are not God, then we might actually get ahead much quicker. Our job in this non-duality masterclass is to take nothing personally, nothing. Because remember, you're playing an opponent that is not as good as you. The matrix, it requires billions and billions and billions of people to match the vibration that you hold in your body, okay? It takes a corporation to match what you vibrationally hold as God. And you're worried about that corporation, right? Because they tell you, oh, you need this drug because you're fat and ugly. Okay, they just made fun of your shirt. You see, and you're like, this corporation is stupid. What is the beginning word of corporation? Corpse, it's dead. It's not even alive. You see, so you have to understand that you're being completely manipulated because the talent level isn't the same. Your gene pool, right? You have a mind, body, soul. You are not soulless. You might have your soul in jail cell somewhere because of doubt, right? Doubt is where you lose your intuition. Doubt is where you question yourself. Doubt is where your free will, your will just goes to whoever has a solution for you. Doubt is where you're asking psychics dumb questions. Okay, doubt is where you take another class because you don't feel smart enough. Doubt is when you create a beautiful project to work, but then you see someone else doing it and you're like, it's probably better, so I'm gonna wait. Doubt is when no one shows up to take your class that you think you're not a good teacher. You see, you're just in the dark side of your night. So I'm just gonna read through some of these, these questions that you can ask your own self-concept to see that you are multi-fractions which means that there's different aspects of you having different experiences on guard at different places, preparing for someone to call you a shirt ugly instead of preparing to walk through the gates of heaven. You are more prepared to be insulted than you are to get what you want. Isn't that sad? 
It's sad because we don't understand the dark side of the pattern. All right. First one is who am I when I don't get what I want? Who am I when I don't get my way? When I can't do what I want, where I can't be what I want, when I can't have what I want. Who am I? Are you a five-year-old tantruming? Or are you what? Fill in the blank. And I would really recommend until we launch this thing that you take this opportunity to do this right now as you give you this question so you can come back and listen to this if I go too quickly. The next one is who I who am I when I don't have what I need? When I can't get what I need. When I can't go to where I need to. Next one. Who am I when I'm waiting? Waiting on other people, on other things, waiting on money, waiting on opportunities, waiting for someone to pay you, waiting for someone to ask you out on a date. I don't know. Waiting for an apology. Who are you when you are waiting? Who are you when you're being criticized? Who are you when you're being judged? Who are you when you are being ignored? Who are you when you are not being chosen? Okay. Who are you when you lose? Who are you when you fail? Who are you when you see others get what you want? Who are you when you see others get what you need? Or what you asked for? Who do you become? Now here's one that's gonna that's gonna trigger your nighttime. Who are you when you see others lose? When you see others not get what they want? Parts of you are happy. Misery loves company. Oh, good. If I can't have it, I'm glad she's not getting it. Okay? Some of it. Some parts of you. Not all. There's a part of you that's like, darn it. I really wanted to see her get that. And part of you is like, oh, thank God she didn't. Because now I don't feel like a loser because I don't have it. You see, the, the, when you look at these questions, you're gonna see exactly why we're not Michael Jordan here. <sighs> because these vibrate, the answers to this vibrate and there's way more. Who are you when you're not seen? Who are you when you're not heard? Who are you when you, um, when you don't feel safe? I mean, you have a whole other side of you when you don't feel safe called defensive you, protective you, right? Your inner child records the scariest memory that she can find as a child and becomes it when she gets scared. This is why you usually channel a parent or something real scary, like, whoa, where'd that come from? Because that's the scariest thing you can create and that's the way you protect yourself. You become it. So you have to understand that you are not being consistent with I am a winner. I am God. I am the best. I am, you know, always arriving on time. I always have the money I need. I always get my way. So you're affirming these things in your daytime, in your conscious, where you can control it, where you can, you know, build, plant the roots and, and sow the seeds and all that stuff. But who are you when these activations hit? Because this is your nighttime sequence. This is what pushes you off your chair. This is where you're about to make the best move of the game. And someone's like, why are you so ugly? You know what I mean? Or, or like, what are you even doing here? You're a horrible player. That's the worst move you could make. And then you doubt yourself. Because the thing about the matrix that has been spending thousands and thousands of years to build up in the occult power is confidence. There are more confidence, confident creators than you are, but they don't have the talent. And they also don't have the resources. They actually need your resources to make the corp. Who's going to, who's, who keeps the corporations in, in business? Us. Oh yeah, I need that drug. I need that. Oh, I got to have that one. You see, so we're the ones who feed the soul energy and the spirit energy to this confident game that is only confidently arrogant 
but very, 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 very untalented. And so if you looked at these things as, okay, what if I stayed in my I am rich when all my money disappears? What would happen? What if I stayed there? What if I stayed in the day, in the night? What if I could see someone else that is just a reflection of me? Because Neville Goddard says, everyone is you pushed out, which means that your birth, everybody around you is birth, a birth of you. What I use, the analogy I use is you're the player and through the player, you, through a photocopy, you are photocopying everyone else out of you. So what if someone is attacking you? So let's let's do this chess game again. Me staying in my I am. Okay? I'm God. I'm playing chess. I'm way better than this loser AI whatever simulation of the matrix that's playing against me. Okay? I've got divine power. I've got intuition. I've got I've got knowledge out the wazoo. I played this 100 times. I've built 100 worlds. I've got this game in the bag. And all of a sudden, start the game plays and I, they realize that they can't beat me. So they say my shirt is ugly. Okay. And what could I do instead of going into all of these self-concepts that we have been attacked and judged and all these things that make us feel small and turn our volume down. What if I turn my volume up, but instead of overpowering them, I literally decided to reflect love at them. What if I said, well, you know what? I think their shirt is amazing. And I'm really glad you wore that because it's inspiring me to play better. What if you said that? Knowing that that's just a reflection of my wounded inner child. The person who just called me ugly is just a reflection of my wounded side. My unloved side, my unseen side, my untalented side, my loser side, my lower self. I'm only playing against my lower self here. See, we're not actually playing against the matrix. We're playing against our small selves. And they don't feel good enough. They don't feel talented enough. They don't feel worthy enough, pretty enough, successful enough, rich enough. And so they don't want us to feel good either. So when you ask the question, how do I feel when people don't succeed? That's your lower self. Wow, I kind of feel good when they don't succeed, but I don't like feeling like that. And then I judge myself. You see, so when you really start studying your self-concept, you're getting to know your higher self and your lower self in the same room, playing against the same chess. And so me, if I looked at, this, you know, mean, critical, pessimistic, passive aggressive, you know, doubting Thomas, whatever you want to call it on the other side of that chessboard. And I decide that everything they say, I'm going to send them back with something just as amazing as I possibly can. Because the thing is, is if you meet everything in love, right, eventually they will fall into love. See, the game isn't going to be they're going to throw the chessboard over and run away. They're going to they're, they're going to keep going because part of their small self begins to feel seen and heard. The reason why they want to win and that's why they'll cheat to win is because they want to be seen and heard and acknowledged. So what if I just start acknowledging them? Well, I think your shirt's awesome. I'm sorry, I don't like mine. Don't look at it. But I love yours. Where'd you get it? Wow, did you make it yourself? You're so talented. Well, you're really good at this game. You see, now they're in their head. And eventually they're going to be like, hey, get out of my head. I'm be like, no, I just love you. And they're going to be like, I can't do this anymore. Good. Let's not play this game. Let's just be unity and oneness and stop playing against each other, which is the matrix. We think that we're playing against the government. We think we're playing against politics and the corporations. We're playing against our lower selves. We've got small man complex in a big, arrogant world. So you are playing against your smallest self, not some scary devil. Remember, devil is just doubt. Because as soon as you have doubt, you're no longer the greatest. Right? Muhammad Ali said, I just have I'm the greatest every day, every day. I'm the greatest. 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 Because here's the thing, your brain doesn't see outside of you. So eventually it's going to believe through repetition, reconciliation, revisement, time travel, that you're the greatest. But can you stand in the fire of the night? Can you be in the night and protect your inner child? Can you be in the dark and love yourself broke, sick, alone, charged, triggered? Because you know what a real trigger is? A trigger is that someone has activated part of your self-concept that you didn't want anyone to see. It's a part of you that you had to believe by force of repetition that you never wanted to believe. 
That's where a trigger is. You're going, I don't want to believe this about myself, but it's in there. Because you realize that every thought or feeling that is inside of your body will be telepathically communicated through someone else. So when people start saying, wow, you're awesome and you're amazing, it's because you're saying that. Not because they're saying that and they finally just see you. You're saying that to yourself because everyone is one being and there is only unity of oneness, which means when I speak, I am the greatest, then pretty soon other people are going to start saying that. Okay? Like, wow. I remember I was like, you know what? I am shite at everything. I can't hold a real job because I I can't, I have authority issues. I got to do something in my world. I'm really good at helping people. I know a shit ton about universal knowledge. Uh, let me make up a, let me make up a job for myself and let me go online and see if anybody is, likes what I have to say. And I'm going to call myself a spiritual teacher. And then a hundred thousand people later, they're calling me a spiritual teacher. Uh, not because I got some like anointment. It's because I decided and I chose and I said it every day till I believed it. And then other people believe it. And then they cry when they see me on tour. Oh my God, I can't believe I haven't seen you in real life. I'm like, what? Do you even know? Like, I'm just a little kid. Like, I, I, I'm naughty. You know, like, really? You're, you're looking up to me because I don't know what I'm doing. They're like, oh my gosh, I thought you were so big. Because I was showing myself as only the big personality. Okay. And then it was just like, all right, but so are you. Right. Because it's like, once you've decided it, owned it and said it and your body knows it, you don't need to hear it again. You don't need to hear you're the greatest, but you got to say it and know it and live it and breathe it, no matter who is telling you you're ugly. Because the thing is, is the matrix can only, or your small self, can only use against you what has been used against you. Did you know that? Your small self, the one across there, the reason why they called your shirt ugly is because you you feel ugly in shirts. See, it's like, you always feel like, oh, the matrix knows my weaknesses. So it's like the one area where I struggle, that's where I'm, I'm dealing with. Because it's the small you having a tantrum. It's the you, the small you, having a tantrum. And we call it the matrix because all of this is God. All of it. Even the so-called devil. Hold on, dogs are jumping on glass. This is how they let me know they want it. One sec. Okay, so with that being said, when we look at moving forward in the ninth month of this year, all right, so looking at the ninth hour or, you know, uh, in sports, like fourth quarter, whatever you want to call it, you know, like we have in Kansas City, which I think is hilarious that I'm always talking about the kingdom of heaven and Chiefs is the kingdom here in Kansas City, we're the kingdom, right? And Patrick Mahomes, which is you know, he's a great, he's young, he's, but he is, he's great. The reason why is because he knows he is, you know, why he knows he is before he know he was, he was raised by a father who played professional sports. So it's literally was taught to him before he even played his sport. He watched professional athletes. He saw the mindset. He was raised in the atmosphere. So this is a no brainer for him. He doesn't have to go learn his mindset. He just has to work on his craft. Okay. The young kid, like in his early twenties, already making hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars right here in Kansas City, right? Beautiful wife, two kids. It's like, wow, storybook, right? And that's what happens when you have a decent childhood, <laughs> okay? So all we have to do is go, okay, well, what, what is that mindset? What is that mindset? It's, it's, it's discipline, it's consistency. Because the thing is, you're not gonna see Michael Jordan at the OK Corral binging on complex carbohydrates of cinnamon buns midweek. You're not gonna see that. Because his body is his temple and he's going to eat what makes his body believe that it is God. Okay. So what is your diet? You know what I mean? Like, like when you look at professional greatness, they are great in like a couple of hours, but they're practicing greatness all week. Aren't they? They are watching back their old plays. They're, they're doing their inner work. They're, they're self-talking, they're, you know, the they're consistent so that their reality, although chaotic in the game, is very structured and linear on that road to that moment. You know, you can see someone who wins millions and millions of dollars for running like a three-minute mile or a two-minute mile or something. And it, their entire job is over in two minutes. 
Or let's look at a race car athlete who literally gets paid to race super awesome cars and they get paid by sponsors. I just want you to look at greatness on this planet. It's all play. It's like, okay, well, I want to get paid to play. This is what Alan Watts said. Find some way to get paid to play. And the thing is, is it just doesn't matter where, where you channel your greatness. It just matters that you know you are. And then you find the unique expression. You want to go fast? Race cars. You know, you want to help people? Do this. You know, you want to play a sport? Get in there. Like my partner, he, you know, they say, oh, if you don't start, if you don't start kids early, like, you know, they're not going to be great because of the muscle memory. They got to start kids playing the sport that they're going to be in when they're before they're five or their brain will not know that they're they have talent. My partner started playing baseball when he was 14 and he went to the majors at 20. It had nothing to do with it. He just said, I had a natural raw power, so I just put in routine and consistency and scouts came found me on the farm. He said his school was so small that nobody wanted to go to that school because no scouts could come find you. And he goes, they find you if you're good enough. You know what I mean? So it's like you think, oh, people are not going to find you. Clients are not going to find you. Money's not going to find you. You're not being great enough. All right. So really what it comes down to is our self-concept, you know, and you could even take this deeper because I will tell you that this is just the tip of the iceberg of what the questions are going to be in our self-concept course. You know, who am I when my husband's here or comes home? Who am I when he leaves? Like, who is gone? Like, who are you when you first get money? And who are you when money starts to run out? Who are you with a full refrigerator and a full belly? And who are you hungry? Because the thing is, is if you look at your oppositions in your self-concept questions, you will be able to see who you're playing chess against. Because like, I went online just for shits and giggles to see these self-concept t-shirts that are out there. They've done no shadow work at all. They've read Neville Goddard and they're just teaching self-concept, self-concept. Just, just go to the end, just go to the end. Just be who you want to be, be who you want to be. But oh, he's not calling me back. Oh, just imagine he's calling you back, right? And I'm like, okay, that's going to get you the call. And then, then you'll manifest the abandonment because the night's coming. You know, I mean, how many of you guys have worked so hard to manifest something and then lost it? Who are you when you get something? Who are you when you lose something? Who are you when you're waiting on something? Okay. Because the thing is, is if you look at children, they're in the now. They're in the now. They're in the now. They don't wait. They don't like to wait. That's where the time wound is. Right? They Are we there yet? Are we there yet? So who are you when you have to wait? Probably who you were forced to be, okay? Not who you want to be, but who you were forced to be when you had to wait. You know, your parents say, sit down, shut up. You need to be seen, not heard. So you're just festering the, right, inside all the weight. And then that just causes you to wait more in life because you resisted it so bad and hated it so much. Or did you act like me and go, ooh, waiting is an opportunity for me to go in my imagination to my ma magical place. And then waiting became safe. but actually became unsafe because I'm so safe in the waiting that I create more waiting. You see, so it could be a positive or a negative. This is why you can only analyze your chess game because you're not playing against the matrix. You're not playing against money. You're not playing against the government. You're not playing against creepy Biden. You're not playing against nobody. Federal Reserve, Royal Family. No, you are playing against your lowest most abused, lost, unseen, unheard, unloved, unsafe you. That's it. And when that self-concept becomes instead of, oh, I just have to get her get, get her thoughts out of my head and and uh, and see, see the win and and ignore what she's saying. The thing is, is what I what I have had the greatest success with is looking at that opposition, that critical, that making fun of me, that lack of money as my small self who was never allowed to have the right tantrums, who now has the tantrums through passive aggressive or critical or self-sabotage or forgetfulness. Because forgetfulness is self-sabotage, guys. If you're forgetting appointments, if you're forgetting stuff, I was doing that majorly last year. I'm sorry. And some, some of you were the effect of that. I'm like, it's just gone. Like the calendar is just away from me. Okay. Lack of motivation, that's a tantrum, okay? Illness, tantrum, 
loss of money tantrum and but you have to find where the tantrum is why would someone say your shirt is ugly when you're playing a game because they don't want you to win what happens if you win you're going to abandon them again you're going to leave them again and they're not going to be seen and heard and they're not going to be seen great for this game so they'd rather try you know cheat lie steal than have you win because the closer you get to the aroma of the cookies, because you're leveling up and you're leveling up and you're affirming and you're I am, your smaller self's like, what about me? You're leaving. You know, have you ever, did you ever go to someone who just everything they touched was great? <laughs> they were just like, like you had never even had a chance. Like they were beautiful. They came from a great family. They loved everyone. You couldn't even make fun of them because they were just like, they were too good. And then that just, that, that just projected your image. Like I, I can't even make fun of them. It just makes me look worse. Did you ever go to school with anybody like that? Did you ever know anybody like that? That just like made your whole existence look worse because of their greatness. See, this is why you we play that big fish, like small pond syndrome. We This is why we don't want to grow because it's like what we've done in our little bubble is we've found our own little form of greatness or our own little form of control or our own little success in our company or our own little gig and we're afraid to go start out as that, like that average Joe in a bigger pond and have to grow into that. So there's so much examination that we have to do on our self-concept these last few months of the year. And this is why I'm always saying, you know, it's like when things don't go your way, are you running tattling? Are you a tattletale? Are you gossiping? Are you, are you blaming? Okay. Well, guess what? I'm not the greatest. If I'm, if I'm, this is, I can't believe she did this. I don't believe I'm the greatest. Michael Jordan would not lose a game and go call his mommy. Okay, he wouldn't. His mom might hug him, say, you are the greatest, no matter what. He'd say, yep, I'm going to take this loss and I'm going to become more great from it. I'm going to become more great because of this loss. I'm going to go study where I was not present, where I was not lined up, where I, you know, didn't see someone else's greatness in the other way to anticipate it. Because the thing is, is he's not just studying himself. He's studying the algorithm. And see, what you've got to do is you've got to study these questions because these are your mirrors. How you behave and reflect into other people is your small self. Now, when you see someone very great in your world, this is what a lot of people don't understand, is that this isn't all negative triggers down here. This is, I mean, it's hell, but you, you literally can have the experience of heaven if you looked at it differently before you even created it. If you looked at everyone who's doing better than you as you, everyone who's doing better than you is you. It's just a reflection of your highest self, okay? Everybody who's doing worse than you is a reflection of your lowest self on some spectrum, like the color spectrum, right? And you're like, no, I'm green. And they might be purple. And you're like, that you don't resonate with it, but it's still you. It's the, still the color wheel is you. So you have a highest spectrum and you have a lowest spectrum and you are everywhere in between. And if you just take these basic questions that I gave you today, and then just run with them, you will see your spectrum. You'll see your different tantrums. You will see your different, your different spaces of where your ego has to get up and defend you. Right. Last week we talked about how your ego kind of becomes the mediating parent, the foster parent that stepped in when you got separated from source energy and is like, using you as its host and doesn't want to let you go to source okay that's why it's keeping you small and your volume down and manipulating you and telling you you're ugly and don't go outside you're safe you're going to get molested if you go out there you know that's that's a bad narcissistic parent and that's basically your ego because the thing is is you've been shot down so many times you don't want to keep getting shot down the number one reason why people don't manifest money is they don't want to lose it again okay if i get more money i'm gonna lose it or someone's gonna take it so what they're actually saying is, is I don't want to manifest money. I don't want to manifest another loss. This is why I taught time travel last week. Because if you go take, like, okay, you look at the area where you struggle the most. Okay, I can't get a relationship. Go time travel all your losses in relationships or loss of self in relationships. Loss of the person or loss of self. Maybe loss of your best friend, loss of your home. What'd you lose in your last relationship? You're afraid to lose it again. And this is why you can't find anybody good. And if you do, you know you're going to do it again anyways. And this is why you're like, I'm good. I don't want to date somebody. Because you, somewhere inside of you, you know you're going to repeat that pattern. So you're just like, I'm good. And that's fine. And so it, it's like understanding who you are in relationship and what you've lost. 
Because the thing is, is the more someone loses, the more that they start to use other abilities to succeed. They don't use their raw talent anymore. They use their manipulation. You know, you walk in and you see a crappy salesperson who you you're just completely heartless, but they're going to say anything to you that you want to hear so they can sell you something. You can smell them away, a mile away. That is someone who has lost so many times that they don't even try to be kind or nice or sweet anymore because they've been hurt so much, but they're going to try to use your needs and wants and your advantage. It's like this clickbait shit. Like, oh, you got this problem? And it takes you down here and all of a sudden you're buying something. You know, it's just like, this is this is not what we're doing here. It's just like, for me, even though I make a living this way, the way that I want to present myself is that I can share with you something that I'm experiencing or going through or just grow, grow through. If it helps you, great. Pay me for my time. But I'm not like trying to take you into a dark place to sucker you in to something you know what I mean? It's just like this idea of your small self and your big self. Small self needs to sell herself, convince herself, needs to be center of attention, needs to be every eyes on me, needs to be the best, even though she feels the worst. Okay. It's like not seen, not heard. You ever talk to someone and they talk over you? You start saying something and you're like, oh, I did this. Oh, I did this yesterday. And it's like, okay, well, great. Let's hear what you got to say. You know, oh, I went here. Oh, I went there last week. It was so good. Oh my gosh. Try having a woman's retreat. There's always one or two. Okay. And you're just like, oh God, I love you. And I see you and hear you, you know, and it's, it, it, God bless them. Because again, that small self is getting triggered by someone else having the attention in the room. And they don't get, they're not a of it. They're not a of it. So you have to sit and reflect, not who you think you are. But who you actually are in these situations, like what happens when you don't get your way? You know, if you're used to not getting their way, then you're probably just like, that's life. Dust it off. But it doesn't mean that there's not a part of you that's like, I'm supposed to have my way. So this self-analytics of the self-concept or the self-identity or, you know, the dualistic self, however you want to call it. You know, I, I love the way that Neville brings in the idea of revision, okay, because it's a form of time travel, and then you have your time travel. So, you know, you bring in the three, third aspect of reconciling. So have you ever tried to reconcile your credit cards or your checking account, and you're off by like two cents? And you don't know what account it is. And it's just like, it's driving you crazy because you can't move on. Some of you are just sitting in unreconciled shit. Some of you. It's like you're off by two cents. And you're like, mm, and you got to go back in and back in. And some of you, some of you just need to revise it. Give your inner child everything she ever wanted in the imagination. Some of you need to go pick yourselves back up because you've abandoned yourselves. You know, some of you need to reparent yourselves. But see, the thing is, is that chess game is not going to change. It's you against you. And you're better at the game, but they're better at the mental warfare. They're better at making you feel small. They're better at, because they feel small. You know, I just had this talk with my son. We're doing these daily affirmations. And now that he's in fifth grade, first thing he says to me when he gets home is my teacher doesn't like me. Nobody in the class likes me. None of my friends are in my class. This year is going to suck. Like, this is like spoken from the words of God. And I'm like listening to this. And I'm like, oh, you didn't get the teacher you wanted last year. Nope, she didn't like me either. So now no teacher's going to like him, right? And it's just like, this is the way that he's just like dealing with it. So he doesn't get his heart broken again. And, and I don't want to play baseball because my dad's going to heckle me and he's going to tell me I suck even when I do good. So what's the point? Now he's, he's what, 10? Let's put 30 years onto that and see what his state of being is going to be like. What's he going to be like when he's 40 years old if this doesn't change? Luckily, he's got me and I know that he's a reflection of me when I was little. But see, he can be like, oh, I don't want to do this. I, I couldn't say nothing. I was like, Take it and swallow it and be happy with it. With him, he can bitch about it, which is awesome because he can at least share how he feels. And then I get to be the reflection of my own inner child with him and I get to help him affirm. But what if we change the story? Your brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and real. And in, in a basically a fifth grade lesson this morning, our entire 25 minutes, I taught him how the brain works effectively and whatever he puts in is what he's going to give back. And I said, let's do an experiment. I want you to say something to yourself over and over and over again in your head all day, especially when you get the fidget, because he has an ADHD. When you start to get the fidgets, you use your affirmation. I am 
I know it's handsome. I'm the best student. Everybody loves me. I'm I'm an awesome kid. Everybody loves me to run me. Okay. That's what you say when you get the fidgets. Do this for the week. I guarantee someone will say those words out loud to you next week and you won't expect it. And now you can see I'm telling the truth. See, so now I didn't say, oh, you got to believe me. This is how it works. I said, put it to the test because everybody is you spit out. Everybody's you. If he thinks, oh, nobody likes me, no one's going to like him. He's bull He's been bullied ever since his dad started bullying him. You see? Because his dad is a little boy sitting at the chess game, seeing all his bright light, and he's got to shut him down. Even though he wants his son to be better than him, he also doesn't want his son to be better than him. You see that? that it's very convoluted. And this is why you have to study your self-concepts, because in some areas, you want people to be great. In other areas, you want people to not be great. Because your ego is a narcissist. It lacks empathy for everyone but itself. You talk over someone at a party that's trying to share an intimate story, you're lacking empathy for them and you're needing it to be about you. And you might not even know you're doing it. When you see people, people do that, it's very uncomfortable because you're seeing everybody be uncomfortable and they are completely unaware they're doing it. And it's sad because how do you tell someone that? You know, how do you say, hey, Kind of making it about everybody. You're making it about you when she's trying to share a story because then they take it personally like you're attacking them. Oh, we don't want to hear your story. That's not what we said. You know, take a breath. Let, like speak to and listen. But it, again, this is like when you're not seen and heard as a child, you're going to perpetrate your, your reality or you're going to be a victim of it. You're either going to push yourself on everyone or you're going to hide from everyone. Whatever worked in childhood is probably how you're still showing up. If you were a people pleaser and a doormat, it is because you never got your way. And so the way you were seen and heard was by service of others. That's me. Okay. And then when you try to be seen and heard, the world attacks you. How dare you want to be seen and heard? How dare you need help? How dare you need a friend? Because that's what I expect. You see, that's what my small self expects. So I can't need help. I can't get sick. Ain't nobody here for me. That's what my small self says. I got to keep being in that helpful position if I want to have value of myself, which is bullshit. You see, so it's like how we show up in the chess game moving forward in the next three, four months is going to dictate what life you live next year. Now, every moment is a new year. Every moment is a new you. Every moment is a new chance. So if you catch yourself in one of these, you start going, oh, wow, I'm a real bitch over here. And I'm a real bitch when I do this. And I'm a real victim over here. And I'm, I'm a scared little girl over here. And I'm a narcissist right here. Do you understand that self-awareness is love? Because if you can see yourself behaving that, you could be like, what does that child need right now? What does that child need right now? What would a narcissist need right now? What would this What would this little girl that needs to be seen and heard? I just need to listen to myself more. Okay, I need someone to listen to me because I'm not hearing myself. I need someone to give to me because I'm not giving myself. The thing is, is every dark night is going to bring you back to the chess game. Ain't nobody coming. Have you noticed? Hey, nobody coming to rescue you. Nobody coming to help you. Especially as you get to the end of this journey. You might have surrogates along the way that are acting in your benefit. But when it comes to the end, you are literally looking in the mirror. And that's all. Everybody is you pushed out. And you're probably going to have a mixed bag right now of amazing people in your reality that are a reflection of the highest work you've done. And you're going to have some people in your reality that are the lowest version of you. And if you are rejecting them, if you are talking about them, if you are saying mean things about them, you will not pass go. This is why Neville and the great teachers and even Jesus is love thy neighbor because it's you. So what I decided to do is help teach the reflections in my reality self-concept work. I'm gonna teach you how to love the mirror. I'm gonna teach my son how to make his voice louder than his dad's voice. I'm going to teach my son how to make his desires bigger than what's happening because he's me. And if I just go, oh, I don't want to see you because then you trigger my insecurities or, oh my gosh, I got to go yell at the teacher or I got to put him in a new class. You can't react in 3D. Otherwise you activate the program like we talked about last week. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach everyone in my reality self-concept. And if it triggers me, right? I work on my self-concept. And then I show them how to change their self-concept and how you can change someone's self-concept, help them change, boost them up. 
appraise them, love them. Wow, you're so amazing at, 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 at talking. You should be a leader. You should be on a stage. Next time someone's over talking everyone, you belong on a stage. You're a, you are you are literally a performer. Have you ever thought about taking acting classes? You see, instead of going, um, you're making everyone feel uncomfortable with all your loud stuff. How about putting them on a pedestal where is what they want? They feel seen and heard. Telling them to be quiet because someone else is talking. Well, now they're five and now they feel stupid. So raising other people's self-concepts around you helps you with you because it's all you. You are the kids. You are the ex-husband. You are the ex-wife. You are the teacher. You are the government. You are the bank. You are everyone. So if you can raise the self-concept of, you know what? I love playing chess with money. It's so fun. I love playing chess with the government. It's so fun because it's me pushed out. I'm just going to love creepy Biden and I'm just going to love the royal family and say, you're amazing because they don't like that vibration. You see, so it's like when you take none of it personally, it just becomes a game. So self-concept, you guys, this is why I'm giving you time travel again. This is why I'm showing you to how to revise things. This is how I'm showing you guys to level up because your thoughts are the bricks that you build a new world with. Your feelings are the glue that hold it all together, right? Got to build that, that foundation. So imagine that your higher self is waiting here, cookies and Wonderland and Disneyland and, and everything you've ever wanted and ponies and all kinds of stuff. Over here going, come on, desire. And then you're over here, but there's nothing here. You 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 can't fly because you forgot how to do that, right? There's, there's no road. There's no way to get over there. So thought is brick by brick. You're, you're paving a bridge. You build the bridge from your thoughts. Now, the thoughts that go up into the heaven of you, which is higher self, are very light and buoyant. They're almost like, like they're, they're like balloons. They're like made out of balloons. And negative thoughts are cement shoes. So when you put a brick, this I love myself, I'm awesome, I'm the greatest, you just, you can step on that and float. You're getting closer. Okay, that's vibration. Now, I think, oh, I thought, I think, oh, oh my God, she just made fun of my shirt. I'm ugly, I'm horrible. She, she's a horrible friend. I need to get rid of her, move away from her, and life sucks. Guess what? Now I'm on the ground again, which is 3D. And now I'm looking at all this other stuff that sucks. And now I'm producing more bricks out of other things that suck because I'm low. I'm in the dark night. So now I'm going to create all this overthinking, burnt scenario thinking about how what she said, and I'm going to twist what her words are and make it all about how everyone hates me. And now I'm building a road. Okay. You see, the 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 lights that the thoughts that are light and loving and buoyant for you, for other people, for everything, you're gonna create that is the only way you're getting to heaven. Is you're gonna build your bridge out of enlightened, fluffy, floating bricks. They have to be above the vibration of boredom in order to float. If you have a guilty thought, you fall to the ground. Okay. If you go on a rampage and you're in hypnosis for 25 minutes, you might have built a patch of road. All right. And how you close the gap. Well, how close do you feel you are to your higher self? How much is she in your body every day? How much are you thinking her thoughts? If you, if it's far away, you got to, you might have, you know, route 66 to build. Who knows? But if you've been working to bring her closer and you've been working on your mental diet and you've been working on your self-concept and you've been doing your hypnosis and you've been doing your time travel and you've been focusing on your reactions, you've been focusing on judgment, you've been focusing on letting go, you've been focusing on building your imagineering bigger than your 3D life. You don't have a very, you can see her. She's like, oh, no cookies. You can smell her. You can feel her. Okay. And so you're like, okay, I just need to not look at what is happening. All right. And if negative things happen, I'm going to say, I love your shirt. I love you. Go ahead and talk. I'll deal with my issues about not being seen heard later. And then I'm going to give you a compliment afterwards. All right. And now you're building an actual road. And this is it. This is all it takes. So yes, when these self-concept teachers are telling you, you don't have to do any shadow work or any soul work, or you don't have to do know anything about anything. They're teaching you how to get what you want in the moment, but you will lose it because your self-concept has lost so much by now. So you have to cut your losses because your losses weigh you down. You have a good thought and then the lost thought of your lower self, but your shirt is ugly. You know, you get money, everybody's gonna take you. You get a whole bunch of money, how are you gonna know if anyone likes you? 
How you gonna know who your real friends are? The IRS is just gonna take it. So what's the point of making it? They're, the elite people are gonna come find you and recruit you to be a devil. I mean, these are the thoughts that your lower self is gonna have when you're like, I'm gonna be a millionaire, okay? Or I'm gonna find my soulmate. Oh yeah, really? Is he really gonna love you for you? You're kind of fat and old. Yeah, have you seen the clock? You're getting older and older every day. Did you see those stretch marks on your ass yesterday in the shower? Because I did. I mean, this is what we have to deal with. This is the heckling of our lower selves. And so when you think that it is anyone or anything, you are giving all your power away. It's like you think that you're playing chess against some normal person over there and the noises are coming from here. No, it's coming from the mirror. Okay. If Bruce Lee can be the best ping pong player in the world with nunchucks. What can you do? I mean, have you ever thought about studying the mindset of these? This is why martial arts was such a big part of quantum fitness. This is why this idea of control versus force, this idea of flow, this is idea of allowing. You know, Michael Jordan does not care if someone else is better than him because he's told his body that he's the best. And that kid who's naturally better than him might not be telling his body he's the best. You see? So it's really about the mirror, the cell concept. So the mirror is reflecting back to you what you believe about yourself. That's it. Law of attraction does not give you what you want. It gives you what your self-concept of yourself is, which means that it takes two points of your algorithm, the highest, highest vibration you can hold, and the smallest version of yourself, and it gives you reality, okay? It's it's taking the two extremes, and it's giving you the algorithm point of it. It's meeting you in the middle, and it's giving you a mediocre reality when you are extraordinary. You are nothing down here to yourself, which is not true, which is your programming, and you are everything. So you take nothing and everything, and you get mediocre. You get, woohoo, Friday, I'm going to go drink a beer. You know, I mean, this is our life. Like, woohoo, I get one vacation a year. You're God. How are we okay with this? Because we don't like to get heckled. We don't like to be told no. We don't like to wait. We don't like to be uncomfortable. So we stay uncomfortable every day and don't even realize we're uncomfortable. We say yes to the jail cell. One of the things that we're learning, or at least I'm learning from the different practitioners that are working through the hacking the money matrix is that we literally are like, please take our freedom. We sign our freedom away. We say yes to this construct. Because again, it's all free will. And we're doing that on the physical reality. So somewhere we're doing it on the emotional reality. Somewhere we're doing it in vibrational reality. We are saying yes to giving away our freedom so we don't get hurt. If you really analyze why you don't want to be in a relationship or or why you're not making money or why you know why something hasn't cleared up in your body if you really examine it i will tell you you will find a failure or loss on the other end that you don't want to repeat or you're terrified of having fear is anticipation of loss or i'm going to lose it again okay that's all fear is so i don't want to lose it again or I don't want to lose it. So you've either already lost it and you don't want to get it again and lose it again because that's really, really, really uncomfortable. Two failures, oh my gosh, you're nothing. You see? So you just say, I don't want it. I don't, I don't really like being in a relationship. Why? Oh, because, you know, I don't really need it. Yeah, you do. You're here for relationships. You're here to be able to be comfortable in the mirror of all, of everyone and still be unique and great, you see? So it's just like, nobody wants to just go watch Michael Jordan play against the whole team, that's not fun. Even though everyone else on the team knows he's the best, there's some other greatness there and there, but they're in their head, okay? Or or they're getting hookers on the side, and so they're thinking about other things besides, you know, what he's doing. You see, so it's just like, like uh, Michael Jordan's um, trainer, I read his book, it's called, being relentless and you can watch you can listen to it on audio and he talks about how to use your darkness right your lower self to your advantage now he doesn't get into the shadow work or the metaphysics or the woo woo but he talks about how hey when i'm working with player i know that they are good and bad i know they have darkness 
I know they have a tendency to go get hookers. And so I need to use the energy of their addiction in their game because we all have it, right? We, we, we're relentless when we're born. I cry, I scream, I yell, I get fed, I get changed, I get loved. I start doing that and I get older, I get divorced. You see? So it's like, you're still desiring everything you need to be here. So if you really want to step it up, you need to start really looking in the mirror of not just who you are when you're teaching this stuff or you're reading this stuff or you're in a great having tea party with your best friend or shopping. Where and who you become, your Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in order to close the gap. Because how to get from here to here is you close the gap with steady, consistent, ritual, discipline, thinking acting, feeling, regardless of what's happening. You take the losses as an opportunity to study yourself. You take the failures as an opportunity to decide what is your purpose is, what you desire. Maybe maybe you're, it's a blessing in disguise. Everything usually is, okay? You analyze every relationship and how you reacted, not them. Because if they're just a fraction of you behaving in one form of a tantrum, that made you behave in another form of tantrum. You know, people pleasing is a tantrum. Do you know being a doormat is a tantrum? It's a way for you to express yourself what you need. You get what you need through giving what you other people need. So you're going to attract someone who's going to go, I need this, this, and this, and this, because they're allowed and you're not. And you're going to give it to them and be mad that you gave it to them. You're going to give them all your money and be mad you did it. That are you. They're just behaving in a way you were not allowed to. So you judge them. You see someone screaming at them. I know, like, look at that. You wish you could have done that. I love watching my six foot four boyfriend do it. I'm like, I love this so much. That I just, let me just have my tantrum. I just want what I want. I'm like, I love it. I'm taking the popcorn. I love that you're doing this right now because you're giving me permission. Because when I got in tantrum, I'm like, great. What can I clean and organize and become? And who can I save right now? That's my tantrum. He's like, just throw it. I'm like, okay, let me study what a good mother felt like when you had, because he did. His mother allowed him to feel. I didn't have that. So now I'm getting that healing in the relationship versus the trigger in the relationship. And that's a sign that you're healing. If money starts to teach you how to be with money, you're healing money. If relationships start to teach you how to be in relationships, you're healing relationships. So how do you know your self-concept is changing? You start to work with your own, your own video game here. You start to work with your lower self. You, you parent when they're down. You take nothing personally. Everything's you, okay? And 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 you just affirm that you're great until your body believes it and starts to move as if. And the whole world will beckon to your will. The whole world will. That means everybody will start telling you you're great, whether you are or not, it doesn't matter. Belief systems are just like, look at belief systems like becoming the lie. It's all a lie. We're making this all up. You heard the phrase because, okay? Take the word be instead of being cause you are the cause and the effect so the two chess players are cause and effect cause and effect cause and effect i am i am i am so if you don't like what's happening when you start doing your i am reflections it's because you're resurrecting the tantrum within you that wasn't allowed to be the i am and your job is to heal it through parenting through love through affirmations through self-care through i see you i hear you i feel you allow you and study these, okay? This is just a small part of the self-concept course that we're creating here. But this right here, this could change your whole world in the next two weeks if you just sat with your own shadows. Because it is not the people around you that are keeping you from your greatness. No, they are inspiring it or triggering it. But you need both. The trigger is going to show you where you have avoided yourself. The inspiration is going to show you where you really are and both you need both guys you promise you you need both it's just birthing that greatness out of you okay all right so that's all i have for you guys today hopefully you take this and run with it it's just a small little sample but it's a game changer because then you don't have anybody to blame or you know no you have nothing outside of you to get upset about and if you go, oh, yeah, well, money's not a chess player. Yes, it is. 
because it is in the way of your freedom, your creativity, your flow, your drive, your ability to go where you want to go, dress how you want to dress. Right. So let's say, let's say over here, you know, your higher self, there's a dress code. Okay. How you dress right now. All right. You ever go to the gym in the morning and then the whole day you eat different, you show up different, you walk different. That's the state of being because you went to the gym. Days you don't go to the gym, yeah, whatever. Days you go to the gym, you're like, I'm not eating that. I worked out today. That's state of being. You care more about yourself. So this is why professionals, even if they're just CEOs, they work out every day because you have a different mindset with your body when you work out. You're not going to go feed it crap after you just killed yourself in the gym. Plus, your body feels better. Your posture feels better. Your muscles feel stronger. You feel better about you, whether the scale changes or not. I can tell when I don't work out. Is because, and I don't need to work out anymore to like balance my weight. It's more therapy. It's posturing. It's strength. It's endurance. It's cardiovascular. It's like, I want to be in a body that can go do the life that I want to live. So much more than how, how am I going to be received? Okay. So remember that you're, this is your confidence or your, not, your lack of confidence. And you don't have to be the prettiest girl in the world, the, the hottest guy. I'm sorry. You know, the dad bods are in. You know, because no girl wants to date a guy that's in the gym for six hours and has better abs than her and doesn't eat. That's not fun. That's why we are okay with the dad bod. But we're not okay with ourselves having it, are we? Right? It's like, oh, what about the mom bod? You see? You see the, the judgment here. So looking at your self-concept is more about, okay, who am I playing against here? And how can I love her? How can I see her? How can I feel her? How can I compliment her when she is criticizing me? How can I say I'm proud of you when I just messed up? How can I say I I love your you know your courage when when you're in lack? You see, so it's just about reparenting. If you've done enough spiritual work, you are assigned to be your own parent now, because it's the child who gets to the kingdom of heaven, and the child cannot be a narcissistic child that is, you know, throwing tantrums in the form of cancer. Because I will tell you, cancer is a tantrum. It's childhood tantrum of repressed anger, not being seen, not being heard, not being allowed. All heart conditions, tantrum. All right, broken heart, not allowed to love. Okay, you got feet issues, tantrum. Knee issues, tantrum. Every single issue is a tantrum. Either I'm not allowed, I don't believe I'm allowed, or I can't. So let's create a condition that I can at least get some attention for. I think, I mean, when you're sick, it's sometimes the only time you love on you. All right. Have you noticed that you have a lot of seasonal PTSD around your birthdays, holidays, summers, the times where you were supposed to be the most free and generous? Okay. Because the, if, if you study narcissism, and dated a narcissist, all of your birthdays were ruined. Christmas was ruined because they go after the things you love the most, which is, oh, that, you know, nostalgic time. And so if you have seasonal PTSD around your birthday or whatever, I would study and examine that. Who are you around holidays? Who are you at your birthday? Who are you during the summer when you have to wear a bikini? Who are you in the winter when it's cold and isolated? Who are you at Christmas when you have no money? These are all great concept questions to ask yourself, okay? And the more you can ask yourself, who am I when? This is gonna take you into a non-judgmental, non-dualistic state to examine the real you and see what needs to be parented, loved, seen, heard, and created safety and allowance where you can replace your shirt is ugly with, well, I love yours and I'm sorry you don't like mine, but I think yours is amazing and I think you're a great player. You know what I mean? What are they going to do? They're going to keep going at you and you're going to keep going at them. Because one thing about criticism, it's it, you have just as much love in your heart as they have criticism. You never run out of love. You never do. The only time you run out of love is when you start to feel criticized. And then you don't know what to say. And you move from love to defensive mechanisms. And now you're going, well, your face is ugly and I don't like you. And now, now you both lost. Now you're mad at yourself because you blew all your money and you failed last year and you're mad at him because, you know, he was there when it happened or he told you, you know, 
to do something and you did it and it didn't work. I mean, it's all just one big, all the people in your life that are negative is you unable to tantrum and they are. So I look at my son who's going through this right now with his dad. He's just having the tantrums that show me where my hidden ones are. Because I get just as mad for him. I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, hold on a second. We're just mirrored here, right? So if I'm working on my self-concept, I'm helping him work on his self-concept because that's empowering. My smaller self wants to go punch his dad in the face. And my higher self is like, no, teach him how to affirm that he's the greatest in fifth grade. He will be ahead of everyone else. He'll be even ahead of the kid that already knows he's great. You see? And that's my gift to him. And this is my gift to you because you're me. Okay? All right, guys. I'm late. So enjoy. Hopefully this works for you. If you see some other people that need this right now, teach this to them. Help them through this. Because if they are you and you believe that they're in your way, you might as well help them become a brick to heaven instead of a cement shoe to hell. Because every person you help is you pushed out. Okay, guys. Bye.